All right, so what's up, everybody? This is Ruben Garcia, and this is a beautiful day. And today on the Proven by Ruben podcast, we have Jordan Jones. What's up, brother? How are you? Doing well. It's a beautiful day in Fayetteville. Uh, here we go. Ah, awesome, awesome. So if you could tell everyone who you are, what you do, how you do it, and all that good jazz. Absolutely. Jordan Jones. I'm a real estate developer and here in downtown Fayetteville. We are renovating the Prince Charles Hotel, and we are going vertical new construction next door. Building a five-story parking garage, above that a five-story Hyatt Place Hotel, and a seven-story office building. Holy moly. So you got a lot going on right now. $74 million of private investment coming online to downtown Fayetteville by fall of 2020. Now, how cool is that that it's private investment? What does that say? What does that say? What does that? Sh- what should that say to the residents of Fayetteville that private money is rolling in? The future of this community is growth. Yep. That, you know, I was born and raised here in Fayetteville and grew up three and a half miles down the street from the Prince Charles Hotel. When we bought the Prince Charles back in early 2015, people told us, what are you thinking? Why are you investing in Fayetteville? Fayetteville's not investable today. Mm. If these products were in a different community, Raleigh, Durham, Winston-Salem, Greensboro, et cetera, we'd be joining and we'd be looking to invest alongside you. Right. Uh, That picture started to change today. Uh, It was not that way in 2015 when we started. We started to show not only a vision of how Fayetteville can potentially develop in downtown, we're actually executing that vision today. 100%. So you'll see a lot of the big players where they'll move into a well, they'll move into a space, and a lot of people will say, "Well, it's just not going to work." And that person not only believes in their vision, they also understand disruption can be in their favor. So talk to me about what went through your head when everyone in your world was just saying, "Don't do it. Not a good investment." Stuck to my gun. Stuck to my conviction. Um, everything I do is for a purpose and with a mission. Right. I don't care to invest in Raleigh and Durham. Of course, great investment opportunities, but you know, I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett, and he's all about the moat. Um, how do you start to separate your investments? How do you start to protect yourself from your investments moving forward? And there's no one that's investing and really be able to have the development um, opportunities and comparable properties like we have here in downtown Fayetteville. Right, 100%. So we are setting ourselves apart, not only the Prince Charles Hotel, which is in this Incredible historic tax credit renovation that can't be replicated or can't be redone here in downtown. We also have a Hyatt right. Place Hotel, which would be the highest in office, highest in hotel anyone would be able to deliver down here. Um, so yeah, we are setting ourselves apart uh, and also have the views and the adjacency to the new baseball stadium. How cool is it to hang your hat on those accomplishments? It's still surreal. Yeah. We are so close. Um, it's been a long journey. You know, we first started. Uh, we were the only ones to compete in the online auction for the Prince Charles Hotel back in December 2014. What? So it's been almost a little over four and a half years when we made our initial $200,000 commitment. Uh, I've yet to receive a single paycheck. Uh, nothing but the red. Um, right. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I think, I think that's so important for people to hear yeah. that, right? Because they think it's this magic thing that you just throw your money into it and boom, it blossoms into something beautiful and cash flow is just rolling out of the door. Talk to us about that growing period, the struggle, the hardship. Talk to us about that. It's been a huge struggle. You know, my uh, my wife was a school teacher when we started out. We had zero kids. Now I have two young boys at the house, three and a half and six months. Wow. Uh, she's had to stay at home. Um, so it has been an issue, um, you know, thinking about how do you raise patient capital? That mm. is okay with expectations, thinking about a 10, 15 year timeline and not necessarily carrying up potential cash flow in the first couple of years. Right. You know, my partners and I, we are all long term wealth investors as well. So for us, it's less about the short term investment. It's how do we create that wealth long term? Um, so yeah, we are, we defer all of our developers fee in exchange for equity. We are investing long term with our investors. Uh, yeah, we have a preferred return, but we don't draw down on our preferred return until our investors start drawing down on cash flow as well. Ugh. So, you know, these projects are more challenging. They're extremely difficult to put together. The value will be there in the long term. Um, but in the short term, it's how do you have that patient capital and how are you able to create cash flow other other ways or create some savings other ways to make this work for right. you and your family. So for some people who may not know what the developer fee is and that you're mm-hmm. actually putting it back into the project, what is the developer fee? What Absolutely. is that? Yeah, so real estate developers are either can be owners within a project or they're hired as a third party group to come in and help assemble the project. Uh, they acquire site control, bring together the architect, the general contractor, closing all the financing, potentially on behalf of an investor group. And typically they're paid a 4% developer's fee, uh, 4% of the total project size. That developer's fee is negotiated how it's paid out. Typically a certain portion mm-hmm. when you close on financing, when you hit key milestones like certificate of occupancy, stabilization, uh, et cetera. And 
our structure with our investors is no, don't pay us that developer's fee. We're going to defer all that as equity in the deal. So that way we have ownership in these structures moving forward. Here right. in the Prince Charles Hotel, what we actually did here is we actually raised MES debt. So we have mezzanine financing as equity that came in the deal. And so my mezzanine debt investors are receiving a 10% annual return. And my partners and I retained 100% ownership of this building. Man. So we have all future upside on this project. Right. You know, my it's investors true. will Long carry term. those cash flows. And then once they're repaid, they're repaid. And we have 100% ownership of any upside in this project. Oh, my gosh. So that's where it's at. Well, I mean, you said the word we are into wealth. Mm-hmm. Right. And wealth doesn't come overnight. So far from it. I mean, how, how that it just rolls right into, it sounds like your values, your mission, your belief to hold hundred percent equity. So you can really feel the long-term benefit of this project. Yeah. I mean, what we're saying today is hopefully my boys call it savings account and yeah. retirement fund. Right. That's what this is about. It's about the next generation. You know, it's about creating that wealth for my family, myself, and also wealth for this community. I mean, everything we're doing today, this is all about transforming this community community economic development impact. So great, we're doing well, but we have to make sure this community is doing well as well. Yeah, and talk to us about how or why that's so important to you to hold 100% equity. Did, was this, I'm gonna try to throw you a softball, was this in your family maybe? Yes, yeah, so my, <laughs> uh, my family never owned this previously. Got it, okay. Um, my family built this building back in mm. the 1920s. So my great-great-grandfather started J.A. Jones Construction Company out of Charlotte. Um, entrepreneur out of eastern north carolina who ended up setting up shop in charlotte north carolina and ended up owning and operating one of the top 10 largest construction companies in the world out of 120,000 employees built things like the panama canal cape canaveral uh, the manhattan project where they produced the first nuclear bombs wow um, so it's incredible thinking kind of my family's history with construction and this project was important for the family because it helped my family get through the great recession and the and the construction company get through the great recession Great Recession in the 1920s. Right. Will his legacy be sprinkled throughout? We're working on a few things to kind of tie that history back yeah. into the building. Correct. So That'd be have, so cool. It's a great historic portraits of yeah. uh, my grandfather, great-grandfather, and great-grandfather who kind of operated and grew that company over time. So we're looking to kind of have places to kind of show some of that history. That's awesome. So what do you remember your earliest days? What do you remember about this place? I have great memories of eating in the restaurants downstairs and the historic elevator cabs and also the ballroom on the 8th floor. Uh, you know, everyone here has their own memories of the French yeah. Charles Hotel. That's what's fantastic about this project. It's not only an iconic building from the outside, but as operating as a hotel, everyone stayed here. Everyone has those memories, whether it was a uh, rehearsal dinner, a wedding reception. My brother had his prom here. Uh, and so everyone Man. has those stories, which is just incredible. Whenever I talk about this project, let people know what I'm doing. They're like, oh, we're so proud of you. We're so excited. We remember X, Y, and Z happening there. Yeah. And so it's just... Th- those ties that this whole community have to this building just makes this project so special. It makes it special for someone like me too, who who walked the streets and watched it almost start decaying in yeah. front of our eyes. And and my wife loves vintage, and it just one it was kind of cool because it started looking vintage more. Yeah, <laughs> but on, <laughs> a little too much. Yeah, a little too much. <laughs> and on the other hand, we were like, man, someone really needs to grab a hold of this thing. So we we so much appreciate that, and I really want the people to really appreciate it. So if you could. Get a little, get a little detailed about some of the struggles, some of the hardest struggles you had about getting this project started and lifted off the ground. Yeah. The biggest struggle from day one wasn't necessarily raising the equity. I mean, a lot of the times when you do your first real estate project, it's all family and friends. And so we had that initial <laughs> equity there together. Cool. For us, it was really about the debt. How do you find uh, a lender that not only wants to invest in Fayetteville, North Carolina of all places, but invest in a deal in downtown that involved historic tax credits. Historic tax credits are a complicated investment vehicle, particularly for lenders to understand because of subordination rights associated with historic tax credit investors. Right. So when you do a historic tax credit project, you go after both state and federal historic tax credits, and you can either keep those tax credits yourselves if you have that much tax liability, which my partners and I do not, or you look to sell them. And so we created a structure where we partnered with an investment group out of Chicago where they actually purchased both our state and federal historic tax credits. But there's a new subordination clause we had to get our lender comfortable where their rights are actually subordinated to our historic tax credit investor rights, which is something a lot of lenders do not get comfortable with. Right. And so it's narrowing down the type of lenders that would get comfortable for a product like this. But we eventually found an incredible community bank out of Virginia called Carter Bank and Trust. A uh, $4 billion bank just now starting to expand their profile and their market uh, share here in the Fayetteville market. 
And this is a great community economic development project for them to use as a demonstration project themselves to talk about how exactly. sophisticated they are exactly. and start talking about their capabilities internally. Oh, I love that because you're also picking up uh, uh, someone who is looking to make a big name for themselves too, right? And you're, 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 also, you're also building legacy here. But for them, I mean, yeah. think about the impact you're doing for them, for them to hang their hat on this project as well. Correct. Everything this product has been, every partner we have, it's been a win-win for everyone. Yeah. I mean, our general contractor here, Kaufman Lane Construction on of Florida, they just opened up a new North Carolina office. They have offices in Florida, Georgia, and Texas, and they're looking for a marquee product to show off their skill sets. Another great example That's there. so you know, cool. It's all about finding a win-win in relationship. Right. If you aren't fully aligned with who you're doing business with, then it could be a struggle. Right. Um, so it takes a while to find the right partners, but when you find the right partner, typically the deals are done well. I love that. Um, so again, key challenge was the financing and the debt piece. Sure. We've had other issues as well. Um, again, as a historic project, when we bought the Prince Charles, it was still up fit as hotel rooms. There was still finished flooring, finished ceiling, finished walls from the hotel. We had no idea what was behind it. Mm. Uh, an example is when we did all the demolition and removed every non-structural component inside the Prince Charles. So we left the floors in place, the concrete floors, left the masonry walls in place. We tore out all sprinkler systems, plumbing, electrical, mechanical, everything. What we found were some challenges we didn't expect. The first one was the floors. So again, this was built as an original hotel, about 110 hotel rooms. When they, my great, great grandfather and his firm built the Prince Charles Hotel, when they poured concrete back in the days, they didn't have the ability to pour concrete across a 12,000 square foot floor plate. Instead, they poured concrete um, per room. Mm. And so when we went to demolish all the rooms, we noticed none of the rooms were level with each other. But of course, we were taking a hotel and putting in apartments, so we're converting two or three hotel rooms into one apartment. So we couldn't create a step up or step down. You know, there were sometimes three, four inches Whoa. of grade difference between these rooms. So we spent about $450,000 to come in here with a massive grinder mm. to grind the floors and repair them. Wow. The grinder was so big and so heavy, we weren't sure if the floors could actually hold the weight. So we had a scaffold all the way down the building just to grind the top floor. And so it was a massive expense oh and a massive timeline. So, you know, when I we bet. came in this project, we had a 10% hard cost contingency, right. hoping that would be okay. Typically, a new construction building, you might have a hard cost contingency of 3 to 5%. Right. So more than two to three times that. Sure. We'll end up hitting about 15 to 16%. Whew. So we've had to do a capital call uh, to mm. the partners just to get this sucker done. Um, so there's always, you know, design and construction issues whenever you do a historic tax right. renovation. And, you know, we're all expecting moving into that. Yeah. So some design and construction issues. Um, another one we had is we we're actually planning on doing a new construction infill, um, kind of in a donut hole in the building. So we went to start cutting out where we're going to pour a new foundation. Well, the area where we cut out to pour a new foundation was actually a basement we had no idea about. Ooh, what'd you find? Not only a basement uh, that was 12 feet deep, we actually found standing water in it. Oh. There's actually a natural stream that runs through the Prince Charles Hotel. Nice. I had no idea that existed <laughs> until we started construction. Oh my gosh. So we had to scrap that uh, new construction infill and change up some of the program. So, so there's, there's always been challenges with this product. So are you saying that there's going to be a stream when this place opens up that we're going to see A wine fish? bar, floating wine bar <laughs> downstairs in the basement. You access through a manhole. Yeah. That would be awesome for all the a Spartan race people out there now. to yeah. slide in. Um, that's awesome. That's really cool. So while you were breaking down the walls, the ceilings, the floors, did you find anything interesting that was left behind from past people? Yeah, the most interesting thing we found was a mural down in one of the retail spaces. Um, a mural painted in 1989. So in the late 1980s, uh, some investors led by J.J. Barnes here locally uh, did a big renovation of the Prince Charles. Um, thankfully, they took care of all the um, asbestos abatement. But, oh, cool. um, when they opened back up, they had a muralist um, go down there and paint a mural uh, Babe Ruth hitting his first home run in Fayetteville hey, in Pittman Stadium. That's cool. So um, now all of a sudden we're adjacent to where the new baseball stadium is. So we're working to preserve and integrate that mural into the retail space that will be going in there. Yeah, that would be um, huge. That's been the biggest surprise. Uh, finding that mural was pretty cool. What else you find? Um, that was really a key piece. Yeah. That was the only good piece yeah. we found. Yeah. We found okay. a lot of structural deficiencies. Yeah. 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 So what other challenges did you have? Because this project, I'm sure... I mean, it just wasn't a few, it was 
uh, say like if you like it was a very small thing, but it wasn't just that, right? Was there other things that you ran into that was just a hard thing to get over? Um, I think that new construction in Phil, we we're planning on um, including six apartments there, and those never came through. So now our unit count right. is 59 instead of 65. So that definitely hurt the NOI right. <laughs> and our loan sizing moving forward. Wow. Uh, some lost revenue there. Um, but I think that was a key piece of it, and the floors. You know, we need a lot more structural I beams than needed throughout here. I mean, the total product size, April of 2018, we're expecting it to be about 17.2, and we're done, it'll be about 18.5 million. Right. And, and so. I mean, you guys are moving pretty quick on this too, or at least for us. Yeah, for the outside looking in, it looks a, it looks pretty quick. So, uh, um, when did you guys start this project? When did it start? Uh, we started the uh, demolition in the fall of 2017. We closed on financing April of 2018. Uh, mm -hmm. We started build back in May of 2018, and so yeah, it'll take about 12 months to build it back. Oh. We're hoping to do it in about 10 months. Yeah, uh, but it's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're loving this right now. We're loving this, watching this happen like this. So um, where are you guys at now? I mean, currently we're in a, a beautiful co condo. Yeah, we're in apartment 702. Apartment. Again, these are all four in apartments overlooking Hay Street and City Hall. Yes. Um, a lot of these apartments here actually have views in the baseball stadium. You can see the LED scoreboard. You can see fireworks at night. So mm. it's, we're not only selling apartments, we're selling the experience of being part yes. of everything we're delivering. Yes. Are you already having people come to you and say, wait, 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 wait. Here's my deposit. Here's my deposit. We are 40% pre-leased. How cool is that? And we're pre-leasing at about $2 a square foot. Mm. So that's a good 40-ish, 40 to 60% premium over the market today. Love that. We're getting the same rents here in downtown Fayetteville that we're getting up in Raleigh and Durham. Ugh. Proving so, that market exists here in Fayetteville. Right. And, and, and so when I first met you, I believe that's when I heard that investors are starting to look at Fayetteville as if it's an up and coming, um, like a Savannah, Georgia. Like a, it's still got the Southern feel. Mm -hmm. but there's, it, brings up a, it brings a lot of attraction. That is correct. Again, when we started this project, investors told us Fayetteville is not investable. Um, earlier today, I shared with you, Ruben, we had institutional investors flying in town again, right. um, doing another round of due diligence on what we'll be building on top of that parking garage over there, the Hyatt Place Hotel in the office building. Right. And they're telling us, yeah, Fayetteville is ready to go, that they can see themselves deploying large amounts of capital into a market like this. So we're there. <laughs> we are so close. It's so cool to hear that. So yeah, it's a um, big deal. Yeah, so, absolutely. There have only been a very few institutional investments actually happen in this market. Yeah. I can think of just two or three exits uh, that some developers have had. Uh, potentially, it's difficult to find those institutional investors and get them outside of what they call tertiary markets, which is Durham, which is Raleigh, which is Charlotte for them. Right. They're looking at Atlanta. They're looking at New York, LA, Chicago. And so Fayetteville has been never on anyone's radar. And they're starting to see the opportunity that exists here. Yeah. I love that. A lot of education. Yes. A lot of handholding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for... And, and I think it's pretty cool for like, especially someone like you who's been here forever and actually saw the growth. And so you're able to really see the opportunity as investors, not so much, right? They didn't live here. They weren't, they weren't here and saw what it was before and watching the growth of how it's going. So, um, I can definitely see that you're, you hold, hand holding and bringing them across the line. And, and I'm sure it helps that you have the story, right? You have the story of growing up here and watching what this place has become and the history that you have tied to it. And they have to know you have buy-in on getting this thing pushed through. That is correct. You know, we tell them we've already invested 25 million in this community. Uh, we've taken on those early investments, those early projects and started to see them come to fruition. We we're performing a good 20 to 30 percent above where our original projections were being. And now they can see, all right, yeah, we can see this happening and you're already delivering and you're already performing. Right. And so, yeah, it's a good place for institutional investors now to jump into Fable. Ah, that makes me so happy. So we're walking into the Prince Charles. What do we see? Uh, you'll hopefully you see the restored marquee right on Hay Street. Um, underneath that, you'll walk in through some brand new fully restored doors from the 1920s. Ah. Open those suckers up and you walk into our high-end steakhouse, seating capacity of about 75. Um, that'll be Fayetteville's highest end steakhouse, an incredible environment experience. Nice. Uh, from there, our residents will take the two elevators up and go to their different apartments. Uh, so you can retail on the ground floor, two restaurants. Uh, we'll have a dentist coming in as well as the coffee scene. Uh, 59 apartments <laughs> on sense. floors two through seven, and then we'll have a high end office user on the eighth floor. Awesome. Very cool. So not just here is where the project's at, right? You guys are... 
Yeah, between where we are today in the Prince Charles Hotel and the Amtrak train station where you'll see our tower crane, 230 foot tall tower crane. Um, that is a visible symbol of the economic development transformation in this community. Yeah. We don't know if a tower crane's ever actually been used in this community before. And so seeing that sucker up there and I try to climb her at least once a week. Really? Uh, go all the way out there and to see the views. It's pretty incredible. What do you, so now you got to walk me through that. What are you grateful for when you're up there at the top? Grateful for this community for accepting what we're doing. Grateful for this community going to all the woodpeckers games. Grateful for this community going to the bird's nest and sporting uh, the woodpeckers gear. Grateful for city council and city staff across the street, particularly city staff. City staff, the building inspectors here in this community are extremely underappreciated. A lot of my subcontractors work all over across the Southeast. And I always ask them, hey, how's it working with city staff here? And all of them tell me nothing but positive things working with city staff here. There's a negative connotation I've seen uh, from people talking to building inspectors here in Fayetteville. City staff, city building inspectors are an underappreciated role here in this community. They do such a tremendous role in advancing the future of the vision of this community. City council sets the policy, uh, but city staff actually implement it. Mm. Seeing city staff out there you know, we had city staff members out at the baseball stadium till midnight before the stadium first opened. The amount of city staff members that were there the first opening night in the ribbon cutting ceremony uh, was pretty spectacular. Uh, this city uh, operates solely because of the city staff across the street at City Hall. Tremendous workforce, tremendous public servants that are underappreciated here. Mm, Just that wanted was... to state that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. A critical role to this community that is, again, underappreciated. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's really cool that you go up there and, and, and not only to view the beautiful city and everything that's happening, but to, I mean, it's just got to hit you with. Yeah, just go up there and just stay there for 30 minutes. Just look around, seeing where this community's come from and where it's going. Uh, seeing all the great jobs being created, seeing all these general contractors out there, all the laborers that are out there, and just seeing the money that's flowing into this economy uh, that is going to these families to then spend money locally yeah. in the community and create jobs, support local retail businesses, and help people buy homes. Uh, Etc. It has a huge impact. Me just being super curious, is there a certain sentence or phrase that you say every single time you go up there? I don't think so. Yeah, no. just the just it's just shocking all right. for me. Just, right. Just take it in. Awesome. You're walking yeah. back down the crane. Yeah. Welcome. So to what or what what else do we have going on across the street? Yeah. So you'll see the five story parking garage that is about to be wrapped up. That'll be a 485 space parking garage. Uh, it's more than a parking garage though. Uh, on top of the parking garage, we're building a Hyatt Place hotel. I think it's so cool. Uh, <laughs> our ability to secure Hyatt Place was phenomenal. It blew us away. <laughs> we were able to secure Hyatt Place. I just got back from Hyatt, Hyatt too. Uh, how'd you enjoy your stay there? I loved it. It was yeah. amazing. It's yeah. a very it entrepreneurial was in Savannah, brand. Georgia, too. Oh, in Savannah. Get out of yeah. here! Yeah, it's, putting on, it's all working together. Yeah, yeah. very entrepreneurial they brand. <laughs> We love Hyatt Place. Yeah. Uh, entrepreneurial brand. They understand, all right, you're going to have your lobby on the first floor of the parking garage and your rooms will be on room six through 10 of that building there because they'll be parking in between. Right. Uh, so again, Hyatt Place Hotel, it'll be about a $22.5 million investment. Hyatt Place Hotel will be on the ground floor. We'll do two retail spaces beside it. Um, the Hyatt Place Hotel will be on the side of the parking garage that faces the plaza um, and faces the Prince Charles, so east facing on top of the parking garage. Gotcha. So, so what is Hyatt most excited about moving in this, uh, this market? They see the potential here as well. They yeah. see how that new baseball stadium is performing. Again, uh, City of Fayetteville delivered a Class A facility. Uh, $42 million went into that stadium. It's not just a stadium, it's an experience. Yeah. Going to one of those events, seeing yeah. the young professionals there, it's all about the experience. No one's really watching baseball. I mean, no offense to Mark Zarthur. No, we have Woodpeckers, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, nobody yeah. has any idea what the record is. Yeah. Yeah. Who's winning the game. It's just about the experience and hanging out. I think that's so, I mean, when we were at the association, when I first saw yeah. you and, and everybody was talking about the uh, baseball stadium, I was talking to my buddies and I was like, do you understand how they're presenting this? Right? It was experience, 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 baseball. Yeah. It's like they're selling the experience, which an amazing experience, by the way. It is. It is yeah. a tremendous job with that. Yeah, it's all about the experience. Um, yeah, I mean, opening night, 6,400 people. I don't think I sat down all night. Hmm. I never got anything to eat. Just going around <laughs> talking to people. That's and awesome. everyone's most common response to me was, I cannot believe this is fatal. Yeah. Uh, just taking in that experience. And that's what it's about. Yes, it's a baseball stadium. Yes, the Fable Woodpeckers has a roster of 30 to 40 players. 
Well, it's not about the 70 home baseball games. They'll do another 80 plus events outside of baseball. It's about the 400,000 people that are going to be coming in that stadium. Right. It's about how when they come here, they're not parking at the stadium. They're parking throughout downtown Fayetteville and walking yep. down Hay Street, walking down Person Street, yep. grabbing a beer, grabbing dinner, stopping a retail store, grabbing a shirt. It's about spending the local dollars here. It's about bringing people to downtown Fayetteville again to promote and support local businesses. And that's what this is about. You know, when the city of Fayetteville originally proposed the baseball stadium, they said, we're going to do this for economic development. But they were looking at a different site. They are looking north of downtown. They are looking at Murkison Road, a site called Catalyst Site 1. They said, if we build it here, a developer will come. Hopefully they will oh, come and build beside us. Right. And I started thinking exactly like happened at the Crown Coliseum. Yeah. I think we still right. have a Waffle House out there, maybe a Holiday Inn. Yeah. And nothing's really built beside it. And I said, yep. love your vision. Baseball Stadium will do well in this market. It'll be well absorbed. This could be an economic development tool. Unless you have a partner holding your hand, willing to invest alongside you, that's a lot of risk for the city to make. Right. If you put it behind the Prince Charles Hotel, we today are here willing to make a $65 million private investment. And you can use those property taxes that all of our properties will be paying to help pay for about a third of that baseball stadium. Right. And they said, all right, that's the vision we want to proceed with. And that's how Was it that ended easy? that site. Almost that easy. They all saw the vision. Yeah, exactly. I mean, one right. day in Southern Pines, uh, my partner and I were over there to meet with a restaurant group. Uh, mixed up the time, so we were there for two hours. So we went to a coffee shop and said, all right, how do we activate the city service parking back there? It's just a dead area. I mean, this is the heart of downtown Fayetteville. And it's, the Prince Charles Hotel is surrounded by eight acres of surface parking. Right, right. And so we pulled up Google Maps. Uh, we went to Greenville, South Carolina. We look at the stadium there. We're like, it mu- that, if you could build an urban baseball stadium on this side, it must fit. We're very sophisticated developers. So we took a screenshot of Floor Field in Greenville, South Carolina. Took a screenshot of this site here in Fayetteville. Cropped it in PowerPoint and dropped it on this site here and said, it fits. With that PowerPoint cropping, we hired, we got an architect willing to put in about $100,000 to show the stadium fit. We took that mock-up drawing to city council members one-on-one. A couple weeks later, they voted to put it on this site. It's about creating a vision. It's about right. providing the confidence that a team can execute on it. You know, the architect we had do those free drawings, HVS, no, excuse me, HKS. You know, they recently completed the Dallas Cowboys new stadium. Uh, they're building the new Los Angeles stadium. So, I mean, they're top of the top of the top design firms for athletic facilities. And see their name behind something that said the stadium could fit back there and how incredible they thought it would fit back there. And our team saying, hey, we've done $40 million in Durham, and let's come down here and do at least $65 million in Fayetteville. City council members saw the vision. They wanted to support it anyway, so that's how it ended up here. Wow. So with, so with the two-hour gap that you were waiting for uh, the... Yep. You used our cellular <laughs> it just... personal network on our iPhones, connected to our laptop. Thought... How cool is that? Used uh, Google Maps and PowerPoint. Yeah. So that's all it took. It, that's, it that, had to happen, though. The had, origin of this baseball stadium is that unsophisticated story. That's, That's what I'm happen. looking for. You know, a lot of people, you don't have to have, spend that much money in due diligence. You can right. test a lot of these simple concepts back of the envelope, literally back of the envelope calculations, simply using PowerPoint and Google Maps. I am the least sophisticated techno- technological person here. I don't even know what device you're recording this on. Um, again, I know very little. And so it, it's very easy to go out there and test out some ideas. Don't waste a whole bunch of money before you jump into something. How can you do it inexpensively to test something out before you make a large investment? So big. Yeah. So big. I mean, it, I know this looks fancy and it has a red button. Red so button. Makes you it press it a couple of times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the very first podcast, matter of fact, uh, uh, the reason I was in Savannah, Georgia, just, just real quick, I was meeting with some coaches, uh, uh, real estate business coaches, and they said, well, how's your podcast doing so well? I said, I just got started. They were like, well, what about your equipment? I was like, before you talk about equipment, just get started. Yeah, that's correct. If you go back and look at my very first one, which I'm glad I recorded because it looks like poop, but it's a story. Yeah. It's a lapel mic and there's these yep. crazy strings, yeah. but I just got yeah. started. Okay. And I think that's a really cool story. So what for you and your partner, what was that feeling? What was that feeling when the aha kind of came over you when you cut and paste essentially the baseball stadium? This can't fit. This is a stupid idea. Why didn't anyone else think of this? Uh, it was really a thought. You know, why didn't anyone else look at putting it here? Um, again, this was eight acres of surface parking in the heart of downtown Fayetteville. We own two and a half acres, and the city of Fayetteville owns six and a half acres. Why didn't anyone else think of this before? 
it's always this idea is kind of, you know, is this a stupid idea or just a brilliant idea? Right. Um, and so we took the courage of putting it out there uh, to get the feedback from council and key uh, business leaders here in this community. And everyone got on board with it pretty quickly. Everyone could see the vision from it. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That is smart. That will be successful. We have the right team in place. Let's go forward. It's, it's a relationship. I mean, born and raised here. I've been building those relationships with city council for a couple of years by then. Because, you know, knowing the Prince Charles Hotel right across the street, everything we do, it's all about the relationships. It's yeah. all about that trust. And that's right. what everything is based on. I just love that, though. I, lo- I love that. It, it was in that gap, that two-hour gap. That's Correct. so cool. So over here, you you, you have the Hyatt. What else yep. is going to be moving over there? 105,000 square foot, Class A office building, about a $27 million project. So it'll be a seven-story office building on top of the five-story parking garage. Uh, we're talking to some incredible tenants about it right now. Uh, a lot of names that already exist in this marketplace, and we'll be recruiting some new tenants for it as well. Mm. Uh, it'll be the tallest building in all of Fayetteville, uh, the highest quality office building in all of Fayetteville as well. Uh, we'll have two balconies that overlook the baseball stadium, uh, 24-7 fitness gym inside of it just for the tenants. Uh, it's a concrete and steel structure, structured parking, ground floor uh, reception area with 24-7 security. Uh, so it'd be a typical office building you see in Raleigh, Durham, or Charlotte. Right. That'll be built for the first time here in Fayetteville. That's awesome. I work with a real estate team and the commercial guy on that team, his sole purpose, he's excited to put some people in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you might have even talked to him, Mike Glasby. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Um, also, so if we were to fast forward, cause I don't want to, I, I know you got a meeting we're coming good. up. Um, if we were to fast forward about 10 or 15 years from now, what would you want the tenants of this place to be telling you about their experience? I want to tell them, I want them to tell me how they decided to move to Fayetteville because they had an incredible new downtown environment to live in. I want people to tell me that they came to Fayetteville and had no idea of Fayetteville's brand and reputation that other people have in Vietnam. I want people to come to downtown Fayetteville for new jobs that are being created in a new office building or throughout downtown Fayetteville as a result of the investments we're making and we're spurring other people to make as well. I mean, a big thing, my whole goal here is for these products to serve as a demonstration project of how Fayetteville can be invested in, how people should be investing alongside us, and how these products will be absorbed. And come on down to downtown Fayetteville. You know, a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm-hmm. Um, so anything I can do to help others is a huge win for this entire market. You know, we want others to see what we're doing as solely a shot in the confidence, a shot in the arm of confidence that others can come down here and be successful as well. You know, the best right. way for a community to actually grow is through the core. Um, a healthy community has a healthy core. Uh, you know, investors and underwriters tell our local governments that all the time. I was in a meeting with Amy Cannon, the uh, county manager from Cumberland County, a couple of years ago. And she told me when Standard & Poor's was in here a couple of years ago, underwriting the community for their bond rating, a uh, key factor they looked at was the vibrancy and stability of downtown. How that was underwritten to impact the pricing of the bonds that would be released in the marketplace. Mm. The core of the downtown, the vibrancy, wow. the investment, the stability has a tremendous indicator on the future of a community. I mean, you think about it right now, you know, uh, when I talk to some previous economic developers here in Fayetteville, you know, they'd be out there recruiting new industries and bringing in CEOs and their wives saying, hey, look how great Fayetteville is. Yeah. Where would they take them? They took them to Highland Country Club and they took them to Cross Creek Mall. Right. And some neighborhoods. Nothing truly to show off quality of life of Fayetteville. Right. And now all of a sudden, they have that new baseball stadium. They have everything we're doing as new tools they can use to create new jobs, to recruit new jobs, to recruit new investment in this community. Right. And as they're walking to the or from the baseball stadium, I mean, you're exactly right to not just throw it in the middle of not necessarily nowhere, but I mean, to put it next to some more restaurants and some more local business owners, right? They're going to get more of that feel in the conversation with the business owners and the people that are in those spots. They're going to get more of the feel in the environment and the culture of Fayetteville. And it'll make them want to move here. Yeah. The whole goal. Yeah. And, you know, I do think we want to pause and talk about Merkison Road. I mean, mm-hmm. something investment needs to happen historically. Yeah. African American Commercial Corridor, right next door, an incredible institution of Fayetteville State University. Yeah. I honestly think this was the best investment over there. But the city and the county are working on thinking through investment on Merkinson Corridor. Right. The other key thing, too, to think about um, if the stadium would have gone over there was parking. Right. Uh, the city's consultants at the time were talking about building a thousand car structured parking garage solely for the purposes of serving a baseball stadium. Right. $20 million investment to park people 70 nights out of the year. 
great thing about moving the stadium here in downtown Fayetteville is there's already the existing parking infrastructure. Exactly. None of the parking that's currently being built adjacent to the baseball stadium is really for the baseball stadium. There's existing parking throughout downtown Fayetteville. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a great way, again, to leverage the city and county's previous investments in creating parking here in downtown Fayetteville. Exactly. And at 100%. And, and when you first mentioned, you know, maybe putting it in that location, you know, one of the things it was is a hope to bring in people when we already have people. That and that's correct. what I Absolutely. meant. That's yep. what I meant for that yep. location. Definitely. That's awesome. So if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Please. So you can. We no, can, we're good. I have a little bit of time. Yeah. I just don't, you know, I, don't know. I know you got a lot going on, so I don't, yeah. I don't want to mess that up. Yeah, I so appreciate the, the time. Yeah, thank you so much. So there, there are a few questions that I ask people. Um, most, of, most of the people that I'm going to have on my pa- podcast are CEOs, startups, entrepreneurs, and, and so on and so forth. So here's a few questions for you, all right? So what do you believe separates excellent from average? It's a great question, one I haven't really thought much about. I think it's... Excellence is something where you reflect your values, reflect your soul, reflect your, your grittiness in getting the job done. Um, something that's excellence, well delivered, uh, reflects you, reflects your core values. Um, you should be able to fully stand behind uh, what it is and how it looks and how people perceive it. Great answer. Great answer. Do you have a favorite failure that you believe has set you up for success? We've gone through a lot of failures in this product here. Right. We had a lot of financing closings we were about to close and we were able to close. We learned a lot of lessons going through those failures and getting this product started earlier that taught us a lot of lessons how to pitch this market, how to structure potential deals here in Fayetteville um, that we've learned a tremendous amount on that now is able to position us, build a close soon on uh, about $50 million of private investment next door this summer. What do you believe is the biggest failure that you felt here that you're going to carry on to your next project, something you've learned? Capital calls are never pleasant. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably carry a 20% contingency into my Nexus door. Oh, did you renovation. take a few shots before making that phone call? Yeah, that was, Just it a- was brutal. We all saw what was coming, but it's never fun. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. never fun. Um, what have you gotten better to saying no to? And thank you for saying yes to the podcast. <laughs> I have a lot of deals put in front of me these days. Um, you know, we're traveling all the time, finding deals, but you know, for me, it's all about finding the deals that just feel right in your heart. Yeah. I could be involved in 10 of deals right now, but you know, I really want to focus my, what I'm working on and the deals that make the most sense that I'm just, I just can't be pulled in all these different directions. So it's about finding deals that create that long-term value in communities. Cause I know if I'm going to do one deal in a community that I love and that I want to invest in, I should stay there and do uh, multiple deals there. Right. And so, you know, I've thought about going into diff- 10 different communities, doing 10 different deals. I've elected to find two or three communities where I can go in and do five deals each community adjacent right. to each other, build off of it, the scale of efficiency. I mean, a great example of that is here in the Prince Charles Hotel. We originally planned to do a thousand square foot fitness room here in the Prince Charles. And then we have a thousand square foot fitness room in the Hyatt Place and a thousand square foot fitness room in the office building. And I was like, wait, we're master developers. Why don't we start to consolidate and eliminate some of these fitness rooms and be able to carry those efficiencies across the various different projects? So again, it's all about if you cre- create multiple projects close to each other, how do you start thinking strategically about those investments and the scale uh, and efficiencies you can generate? I mean, another example right. is I need to have a full-time maintenance person here at this building and a full-time maintenance person in the office building next door. Why not share a maintenance person? Right. And so, again, we're able to create these efficiencies by thinking strategically by getting more invested in one community than doing a one-off project in a bunch of different communities. Right. That makes sense. And it kind of bring, it, 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 it sparks my curiosity. So, you know, obviously we needed a little bit of uh, injection of um, some excitement and, and stuff downtown. Do you, have you found that there's a soft spot, in, soft spot in your heart where you now will, not saying you'll be done here, but maybe looking for other communities who just need that extra push. Or do you have a soft spot in your heart to move in those communities? Oh, absolutely. And I yeah. have two other communities lined up. Um, one great community down in Winsboro, South Carolina. My partner's born, uh, his family is born and raised in Winsboro, South Carolina. And, you know, it's a community where when you meet with the county manager and he tells you a key economic development tool he needs is a new childcare. It's one of the mm. poorest communities in the Southeast. Uh, 
This community was on the cusp of greatness because two nuclear power plants were being built in that community. Whoa. $14 billion of investment. Think about the property taxes generated by that for that community. Holy moly. Both products had to get scrapped because of cost overruns. Two half-built nuclear power plants now exist in this community. This community had already built infrastructure tying to those two nuclear power oh. plants. So they took on new bond financing that should have been repaid by property tax revenues to two nuclear power plants. They don't have financing in place for that. What they do have is they have an existing county administrative office building that's collapsing in on each other. The county cannot take out new financing to build new county headquarters. So we said, you know what? Is there a way for us to get together and solve this for you? So they actually have a historic school in their community that's um, about dilapidated and underutilized as well. We said, what if we use historic tax credits and new market tax credits to fix up this school for you? We will lease the school back to you for 10 years, and you have an option to buy it from us at the end. That helps them get you a better place financially. It's a good deal for us. Right. That community is moving forward with that. Now we have a child care. We have a, taken a historic house and putting Chamber of Commerce in there. Uh, so all of a sudden oh, we're providing cool. these really cool new tools and assets for this community to be able to position themselves moving forward. So that way when they bring in employers showing off the community, they have this spectacular story to show off. Exactly. Instead of taking their old county administrative buildings. The HVAC system there is literally taped together with duct tape. I have found something here in this conversation that you also enjoy a challenge. Absolutely. <laughs> Nothing's easy. Nothing's right. easy that um, is enjoyable. Yeah, So I true. enjoy the battle wounds. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, think about what I've gone through here in Fayetteville. I mean, the issues I had with council member at one time. Right. Issues I've had with city council uh, in this building. Um, issues we're having right now on the parking garage with them asking for additional funds due to design changes. Yeah. yeah. We're only here for a certain period of time. Um, I'd rather focus my energy and efforts on projects that need me, on projects that the market is not doing itself. Right. Um, where I have the ability to raise some long-term and stable and patient capital to go into these communities where I want to invest my time for 10 years and figure out how do you make a project happen. Right. There's another great community I'm working in, Albemarle, North Carolina. Pfeiffer University just announced they're moving downtown. Uh, this great little smaller community, they're opening up two new uh, graduate student programs. Uh, they'll have 300 graduate students and uh, working in downtown Nalmarl with zero apartments in downtown Nalmarl. They haven't been able to get a developer hmm. interested in doing a deal there, so I bought a historic hotel, and we'll be breaking ground and converting that to apartments in, in the next 12 months. And so, again, it's cool. these communities where the market's not at today, where you can't find capital, right. you can't find developers, because they're very challenging. It's much easier to go buy a piece of dirt and a greenfield and do stick-up construction. Right. Those products need to be done. Best of luck to everyone doing those. Right. Uh, I'd rather just spend my time trying to figure out how to make these products happen. Right. I mean, because there's also a spark of uh, creativity that has to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything about this, you know, we have 11 different apartment floor plans and 59 apartments. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is different. Oh, um, man. So, yeah, it, this is this is nothing but That's creativity true. and design. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's fun. Yeah. Every, every day. Different, get a different call. It's all about brainstorming. It's all about having the right partners in play and that trust right. and that relationship to work right. through it together. Yes. Yes. So back to the old saying, uh, you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with. And it sounds like you have a, a super solid team that sparks the creativity, accepts the challenge, and is happy to move forward that is correct. on a lot of that stuff. So yeah. that's very cool. All right. A few more questions. Uh, where are you at? So what profession other than your own would be fun to attempt? Huh. Growing up, uh, I spent a lot of time in the philanthropic world and the nonprofit world. I actually got my start here, uh, summer internship at the Cumberland Community Foundation with Mary Holmes, uh, right down here in downtown Fayetteville. Cool. And so understanding the role and the, um, the role and the power that nonprofits and particularly foundations can play in our communities, the investment tools they have, they could be investing in products to start driving change, um, is an interesting career path I'll right. probably get to at some point. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and something tells me, I mean, you obviously did, you, you did pretty well, I'm sure, um, when you were in the middle of that. Yeah. Um, but that also, I mean, that what, what, a, what an avenue that needs creativity, right? right. And it can be challenging. So, um, I think you, I think you, I think you just, yeah, might just be huge just problems there as well. Yep. Long term investments required, right. patient capital. Right. And so, yeah, tackling today's problems. I love that. Uh, whether through real estate or through the philanthropic side. 
I dig it. Uh, what is a mistake you've seen newbies do in your industry? Uh, I shared earlier, spend too much money too early. If you're going to test an idea out, how quickly can you do it cheaply? How do you just roll it out of the marketplace, see if people accept it? Right. Uh, you don't have a perfect model before you put it out there. Right. I um, mean, that's, that's what people do in Silicon Valley all the time. When they start up uh, new tech companies, you know, how do you get your app out there as quickly as possible, no matter if it's broken, if it's not finally polished? How do you get that customer feedback as quickly as possible to start evolving and changing what you're doing before you throw all your resources at it? How do right. you test out ideas? Done is better than perfect. That is correct. Right. Yep. What is the mistake you're seeing seasoned people do in your industry? I have a, I differ from a lot of my colleagues where I think, thinking about, I think people need to be more strategic thinking about the economic uh, recycle, economic cycle we're in today. I think there's a recession right. coming in the next oh, 12 yeah. to 24 months. I yep. think we're overbuilding multifamily and single family homes today. Mm -hmm. um, that the good times won't keep rolling forever. How do you forget what happened in 2007 through 2010? Yeah. How do you forget the battle wounds from that? I guess it's easy if it's not your capital and you're not investing in deals long term. Uh, but I, th I think we all need to be more cautious yeah. as we look to make our own investments in this industry moving forward. Absolutely. I think, I mean, with it going so well right now, it's it's almost blinding Correct. a lot of people. Absolutely. You know? And a lot of the capital that's flowing into the U.S. today, right. I mean, institutional capital that must be deployed as quickly as possible. Right. And so they're deploying it and not really thinking much about it. Um, but I, I prefer to have ownership of everything I do and uh, the name I put behind it. Right. Right. And it sounds like you set it up just like that. That's awesome. Okay. So purchases of less than a hundred dollars that have most improved your life. Hmm. Um, my laser measure. So I have a, <laughs> you know, instead of bringing around my tape measure with me, I have a laser. Uh, I go around and measure buildings. So I, you know, I go in vacant buildings all the time. Yeah. I'm always in looking out for new buildings and getting a sense of the square footage and different dimensions and how you can potentially lay out apartments or hotel rooms. Right. It's critical. Again, I can go walk in a building with my laser and have my own floor plan sketched up within an hour. Right. Making sense of the deal happens. I don't have to bring in an architect to do a test fit and spend ten thousand dollars. As you're laying the laser uh as soon as you lay down that laser, do you start imagining what that space looks like? Before I walk into a building, I do. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I've been into enough buildings. You know, I've helped acquire north of a million square feet of vacant historic buildings, uh -huh. uh, massive warehouses to historic mm -hmm. hotels. Um, so yeah, that's my passion and interest, and I've been into a ton of buildings. Right. And so yeah, getting a sense of where the community is, seeing where the building is, and the type of uh, architecture style it is, I have a sense of what it should be before even walking into it. And the lasers just sort of help me confirm Right. That. So not only is that a great investment move to match the community with that investment, it also does, I mean, for the people in that community, walking into that and knowing that you paid attention. That is correct. Absolutely. That's huge. Yeah. And obviously it makes a good investment because they love it. They're, they're part of it, right? <laughs> and they'll absorb it and pay they'll those rents. It. Absolutely. 100%. So since I've kind of peppered you with questions, what question do you have for me? Um, what are your thoughts so far what you've seen? I've so this is a word I use way too much, and it's just amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, because when I walk in, I see all the, uh, it look like fridges, right? Yeah. And so I'm taking it in as I walk in, the very now. But when you stop and you said, this is where the steakhouse is going to be, I could almost hear the music, right? Because yeah. it's it's big. You can almost see where the, uh, uh, the chandelier, chandelier is going to be. Yeah. And so it, it, you, it, it's a live Although it's not, it's not tangible right now. It's alive. Yeah, that's how I feel. Okay, right? Because you're already you're already building that in me. Yeah. So how what we've done impacted your life so far? Well, I work with a lot of them. Uh, not probably not the investors you work with, more the local investors, and uh, we're loving this. Are you kidding me? We are loving this. <laughs> um, this is also bringing up a lot of. Uh, um, Man, I don't know if this is a conflict of interest. Airbnb opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, you know, I mean, if anything, it is, it's, it's attracting a lot more people to Fayetteville and, and we're excited about that. And, and it's also helping us, uh, display our passion. And I mean, it's like you said, it's, it's a win win deal for a lot of people and we're excited about it. And I'm almost getting goosebumps thinking about this place. So, um, we're very happy. We're That's what we're doing. This. All we're trying to do is instill more confidence. To get others to invest alongside us. Again, a rising tide lets all boats. So that's exactly what we're looking to do today. This is a demonstration of how this community should be yeah. uh, growing and investing in itself. Uh, I mean, just think about the office users we're bringing in here. I mean, 
big challenge a lot of these office tenants we are talking to here in the marketplace for them it's all about how they recruit talent to this community right. how do they pull in that young professional talent highly skilled talent from raleigh durham charlotte area having an office space that looks a baseball stadium i mean everything we're doing is solely about repositioning this community and helping it move forward love the military couldn't be a bigger supporter of the fort bragg incredible economic asset in this community yeah top notch how do we build off of that I mean, we have a call center located a block away from here, that, and they tell me um, they have 10 call centers here in North Carolina. The call center they have here in Fayetteville is the top-performing call center in the state. It's an incredible labor pool here. A lot of spouses from Fort Bragg yeah. that are looking for great jobs that are not well-marketed in this community. Right. So tremendous assets for all of us to invest in and be proud of. And how about the transition, right? From Correct. Very high-minded individuals in the military that transition into civilian it's life. Like I mean, ten thousand a year, something like that. Yeah, That's a crazy number. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Great labor pool in this market. So, what question? This is the last question. What question do you have for everyone listening? Where are they going to invest next here in downtown Fayetteville? Love to see more investment down here. Love to see people getting more creative about what they're looking to deliver here in downtown Fayetteville and where they're looking to go. A um, lot of great ideas. We'd be very excited to see what people are looking to do in the next couple of years. Same. <laughs> All right. So where can they find you? Where can anybody who wants to touch base with you, uh, where can they find you? Uh, visit thegatheringatpc.com or live at theprincecharles.com. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you so much, Jordan, for taking the time out today. At least I can do. Hope to have everyone out here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ruben. Yes, sir.